Another year, another new iPhone, another incremental upgrade. I, like many of you, wasn't that wowed with the urgent desire to get the iPhone 16, but rather that I can save a lot of pennies and keep using my 15 Pro Max for at least another year. But this leaves me wondering if Apple has hit a wall, specifically with the iPhone's camera system. It's such an important part of the iPhone to so many people, especially photographers and filmmakers and even to Apple themselves. So much so that the camera system takes up about a third of the entire iPhone 16 web page. So the question is, how can Apple improve the iPhone camera specifically beyond the iPhone 16? Hey, it's Michael. I'm a commercial and advertising photographer who has worked with brands such as Audi, Volvo, and Jaguar Land Rover. My channel is all about sharing my perspective as a professional photographer, including iPhones as a pro device. So please consider subscribing and giving a thumbs up if you like my content coming from a working photographer's point of view. I also mentor and consult photographers wishing to improve their knowledge, whether photographically or in their business. My email's in the description below. So let's get really specific about what the iPhone camera needs by first giving a complete pass to its video capabilities. Because at least from this photographer's somewhat limited point of view, I think the current iPhone's video capability is pretty incredible. And it seems Apple agrees as well. Frequently boasting about their keynote videos, which are done really well by the way, shot on iPhone, as well as collaborating with filmmakers to shoot the weekend's music video with the 16 Pro Max, for example. This set you see right here, was originally filmed using a Canon R5 just a few videos ago, but after noticing almost no difference, what you're seeing now comes from my iPhone 15 Pro Max. It's shooting me right now. Pretty good, right? What we don't see anymore is Apple showcasing the photographic abilities of the new iPhones, at least not like they used to. Were any of these photos taken by the iPhone? Probably not, because if they were, I'm sure Apple would promote them like they do their videos. And that's why I think it's the photography side of the iPhone where the problem lies. To sum it up, the one thing I think the iPhone desperately needs is a larger sensor, which will not only solve some key problems now, but also lay a foundation for future improvements. Let's start with low light image quality, which I don't think is currently that great, even with all that computational assistance. In very general terms, I can think of three instances in which the iPhone is most commonly used. Outdoors in daylight, indoors, and at nighttime. With indoors being the bridge between the two, depending on how well that in interior space is lit. We know all cameras do well when there's enough light, including the iPhone, which works great in daylight. I even shot a full editorial car shoot with it almost 10 years ago with an iPhone 6. Remember, that was only 8 megapixel JPEGs. The client was pleased, and even my retoucher said those files were pretty decent to work with. But as the indoor and nighttime instances, and this is a big deal because it's about two-thirds of all instances, where the iPhone struggles, and that's directly because of its small sensor. And yeah, I know sensors have grown generation by generation, but it's still not enough. I feel that Apple is hitting a wall right now because there's only so much the computational software can do to enhance the image coming out of a sensor. In other words, the photonic engine and deep fusion are maxing out. What more can software do unless the hardware provides a better image to work with? Another issue is shallow depth of field, currently handled by portrait mode. This isn't as important as low light, but let's face it, portrait mode is an amazing technology that yields the appearance of shallow depth of field from the 35 millimeter equivalent aperture of around f6.3 on the main camera. However, as impressive as it is, it does come with drawbacks. Namely, it's JPEG only and a reduction to 12 megapixels. Wouldn't it be great if a larger sensor gives you more organic depth of field and perhaps even allowing us to shoot full 48 megapixel RAWs? And before one of you blows your gasket saying that sensor size does not directly mean shallow depth of field, a larger sensor requires longer focal length lenses for the same field of view, which then leads to shallower depth of field. 
So what do you think about larger sensors? Does this even make sense? Do you agree? Let me know down below in the comments. I'm really curious to hear your thoughts. The thing is, I'm not an engineer and therefore have no idea if this is even possible. I figure that the phone itself has room for a larger diameter. I'm just not sure if they can make a lens that would end up not sticking out of the phone too much. Maybe they can use some sort of modified pancake lens to shorten the barrel, but this is way above my knowledge and pay grade. But at least in theory, I hope they can figure this out. So let's hope the iPhone 17 Pro would improve along these lines. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon.